Hey everyone, today we're going to break down chapter 2 of the Tao Te Ching using the J.H. MacDonald translation, which is one of my personal favorites, so let's get into it. When people see things as beautiful, ugliness is created. When people see things as good, evil is created. Being and non-being produce each other. Difficult and easy complement each other. Long and short define each other. High and low oppose each other. Fore and aft follow each other. Therefore, the master can act without doing anything and teach without saying a word. Things come her way, and she does not stop them. Things leave, and she lets them go. She has without possessing, and acts without any expectations. When her work is done, she takes no credit. That is why it will last forever. Okay, so there are a few different themes in this chapter, so let's start with the first two lines. When people see things as beautiful, ugliness is created. When people see things as good, evil is created. So this is our first example in the Tao Te Ching of a concept called non-duality. Now if you go back and look for the definition of non-duality, you'll find all kinds of different things. But for our purposes here, non-duality is the understanding of the oneness of all things, including things that seem to be opposite and distinct. This runs pretty against how most people, especially those who are raised in Western culture, are used to viewing the world. We perceive all things as separate, but through the lens of non-duality, we can see them as one. Our tendency to see things as separate and distinct often comes from our habit of making judgments about the people and things around us. Even the things that appear to be objectively opposite, such as longness or shortness, are two sides of the same coin. Now, some people take the first few lines of this passage to mean that there is no such thing as good, evil, beauty, or ugliness, that these are all concepts we conceive of ourselves, and that don't have any basis in reality. Well, it is possible that that's what the author meant, but let's take a look at another translation. The Jia Fu Feng translation renders these lines this way. Under heaven, all can see beauty as beauty, only because there is ugliness. All can know good as good only because there is evil. Now this translation makes these lines out to mean something more like this. We only know the existence of goodness when we have experienced the existence of evil, and we only can recognize beauty because we have also experienced ugliness. The difference here is subtle but it is significant. One translation holds that good and evil are concepts created by people, the other holds that good and evil exist independent of people, and that we can come to know them by experiencing both sides. So, which did the author mean? Well, we may never know, so for now, I think we have to feel it out for ourselves. However, whether you believe in the existence of good or evil, we can acknowledge that we are not always perfect judges of what is good and what is bad. Some things that happen in our lives seem to be bad, but turn out in the end to have worked out for the best. There's a pretty well-known quote by Alan Watts where he tells a story of a Chinese farmer. I'll read it off here in case you haven't heard it before. Once upon a time, there was a Chinese farmer whose horse ran away. That evening, all of his neighbors came around to commiserate. They said, We are so sorry to hear your horses ran away. This is most unfortunate. The farmer said, Maybe. The next day, the horse came back, bringing seven wild horses with it. And in the evening, everyone came back and said, Oh, isn't that lucky? What a great turn of events. You now have eight horses. The farmer again said, Maybe. The following day, his son tried to break one of the horses, and while riding it, he was thrown and broke his leg. The neighbors then said, Oh dear, that's too bad. And the farmer responded, maybe. The next day, the conscription officers came around to conscript people into the army, and they rejected his son because he had a broken leg. Again, all the neighbors came around and said, isn't that great? Again, he said, maybe. The point of this story is that since we can't see the future, or even everything in the present, we sometimes get a bit ahead of ourselves when we jump to conclusions about whether something is good or bad. This is why chapter 2 of the Tao Te Ching tells us that the master can act without doing anything and teach without saying a word. This is why things come her way and she does not stop them. Things leave and she lets them go. She has without possessing and acts without any expectations. The master understands that there is so much that she doesn't know, and so rather than putting judgments onto things that happen, she allows them to be what they are, and she just lets them come and go. So does this mean that the master is lazy or idle? Not at all. The master accomplishes many things, often more than the others around her. But she doesn't do this by trying to force things to go her way. She does this by observing how things are going and acting on the opportunities that are presented to her. And when the results of her work appear, she doesn't take credit for them, not because she's trying to be modest or because she's trying to talk down how good they are, but because she knows that taking credit for what has been done would be the silliest thing in the world to do. After all, she didn't do them all herself. She allowed an opportunity to unfold, she took it, 
and she allowed the result to happen naturally. So what is there for her to take credit for? We'll talk plenty more about effortless action and non-doing in chapters to come. But in the meantime, let me know if you guys have any questions about this chapter, and I'll see you tomorrow for chapter 3. Peace and blessings.